What do you know about what's happening inside of Shanghai right now? Well, I mean, I think I'm as informed as everybody else is, which is I'm looking at all the Twitter videos and uh, and the, all the articles. So, um, you know, the specifics, it sounds like, you know, it's fairly similar to the Wuhan lockdown where they were keeping people, um, you know, in their uh, in their in their uh, apartments. I think the thing that's um, that they've moved on to is if you're quarantined, like they just take your pet right away. And, and, and you know, there's no like. I think they've gotten more efficient at defining how they implement a lockdown. And, you know, a lot of these decisions that were probably painful in the very beginning, like in Wuhan, like, what do we do with about these pets? They've made the decision. This is what we're going to do. And, um, you know, it's it's basically they've got a checklist now. And one of the things that you you um find out about living in China is there's checklists for everything, right? And you, you, you go through the checklist and you make sure that you're hitting all the things and, and the checklist now is, you know, pretty, pretty involved. So I think they've perfected what they think a lockdown should be. And that's what you're seeing in, in Shanghai. Yeah. I've seen videos of bags of cats alive yeah. in the streets. Uh, I've seen videos of dogs seemingly being sort of killed slash immobilized slash disposed of, which is, I think those cats are going to be disposed of. I think that's, you know, they are alive, but I think they're they're going to be disposed of is is the my the impression that I've gotten from everything that I've seen. What do you think is the reason for doing that? Are they worried that they're a vector of transmission? Are they worried that if you have a pet you're more likely to go outside and break quarantine? I, I would I would imagine that it's they're a vector because I mean pets can get coronavirus. So I I would imagine that they believe it's a vector of transmission. You know, if they're going to quarantine the people, they're going to quarantine the pets. Um, they don't really, you know, they, they can't really kill the people. Although, you know, uh, when you look at the Uyghurs or, or the Falun Gong, you know, they're not, they don't really have a lot of problem with those types of things, but they are, you know, at least at this point, it's just the animals that they're after. I saw a tweet that said 25 million people in lockdown in Shanghai policed by drones that have facial recognition and give orders People who go out on their balconies without masks are fined directly from their CBDC accounts. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome, isn't it? I mean, think about it, the, what, you know, the technology that we created in Silicon Valley. And you basically, you know, what the Chinese have done is they've taken a systems engineering approach to uh, society, right? So they want to they wanna basically automate how society performs. And, you know, if you think of it from a manufacturing perspective, for example, you know, we, we um, talk about Six Sigma. And the idea is that you eliminate all, um, you know, anomalies and you make sure that your, you know, whatever errors that are causing systemic anomalies, you get rid of them. And so in a sense, they've taken those principles of manufacturing and using the tools of Silicon Valley, which are really this ability to um, harvest data and mine it, and then and then use it to to um, basically cancel those that are outside that are anomalies, they have taken systems engineering and this IT um, system that we built in the West and combined it to create a way to automate their society and and it's performance based. You do good, you're rewarded. You get you know better prices, you get better treatment. You do bad, you're you're canceled. That's it. Period. And so you get your performance built in um, because everything that you do has immediate consequence on your life. Just like you said with the drones, like somebody's going to come there and they're going to charge your account if you mess up. Now, you know that's something that's never existed. It's it's essentially like the concept of the Panopticon, uh, which is a prison um, that was designed. So that at any point a prisoner would think somebody is watching them, and so what they what you find with these kind of situations when you're always being watched is that people modify their behavior to ensure that you know they're not going to be punished. And and so what they're trying to get is this digital panopticon where you're always being watched. You know what the rules are. You know if you break the rule, you're going to be punished. And so you get the behaviors, and that's really what they're trying to get. I want these behaviors. I don't want those behaviors, and I'm going to design a system that, that automatically eliminates those behaviors.
Yeah, well, I mean, with the Panopticon, it's kind of like a, a wheel and spoke design, right? So in the middle of it, you right. have uh, potentially one guard sat on a swivelly chair and going out away from him all the way around in 360 degrees or all of the different cells. The difference here is that it's not because of how scalable technology is. You don't just need to have one guard that might be looking. You could scale technology to the point where you are always being watched all the time right they're actually because the ai can do it right the, precisely you don't need and the ai never takes a you know n- n- you know a, a, a pee break and never you know needs a never coffee. goes on lunch yeah, break yeah, yeah, the ai yeah. is like running man it's running in real time and so uh i mean it, it, when you think about it from you know logically if you were going to take an engineer an engineer's approach to um political science it's the perfect way that an engineer would design a system because Everybody, it, you know, there, and there's so many of these dystopian movies that take this approach where you basically just engineer society so that everybody does what they're supposed to. Um, I mean, it's, the, it's terrifying, but it is strange uh, the lack of limits that a bureaucratic dictatorial regime uh, opens up in technology, that there are certain areas of technology, how they can be implemented, how they can be integrated with other uh, elements of society, uh, that when you don't have a democracy and you have fewer human rights, there's a whole new world of uh, technocratic overreach that can be, can be garnered. Right. Well, and, and, and the other thing um, is that, you know, and and what this has traditionally been what China has benefited from its connection to the West, and that is anomalies aren't always bad. Like you have people that commit crimes, but other anomalies are you invent stuff, you're innovative, you create new things that have never existed before. You know, people go to the moon, you know, you create an iPhone. These are also anomalies, uh, just like doing bad things are anomalies. So the problem is when you start to create this system systematic approach to um you know society you're 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 getting rid of all anomalies you're not just getting rid of the bad ones you're also getting rid of a lot of the good ones too and the way and the reason china's been able to get away with this is because they could just go to the west who has the good and the bad and take the good leave the bad and and you know what what you see happening as a as a consequence of coronavirus where a lot of the policies that you're seeing in shanghai were implemented also in the West. You know, countries in the West that are democracies were basically taking the same policies that China was in terms of lockdowns and, and, and all of these other restrictions. And so what happens is over time, and, and this, so China seeks to be the dominant system in the world and then have all systems look like it, which is kind of the same thing that the US and the UK decided to do after the end of World War II. We think all societies should be democracies because. Not only um, we think that's the right way to go, it also protects you know, our vision of the system and that our democracy isn't coming under threat or pressure from those uh, nations that think differently. Well, the China thinks the same way. And so what it's been able to do in the two years of the coronavirus is really slowly begin to move democracies into its form of thinking about the relationship between the state and the individual. You know, the state has power over the individual, and therefore the individual should do whatever the state says without question. This has been how the West has basically um, adapted to coronavirus. And with things like contact tracing in the West, you're beginning to see the technology be brought in to enable that. Vaccine um, you know, passports, digital vaccine passports, passports is another thing. So, I mean, you're seeing the homogenization of the international order in a way that's completely opposite of how it was envisioned after the end of World War II um, between the U.S. and U.K. What's happening with famine? I've been seeing tweets and news stories and stuff about famine in Shanghai. Is that true? You got any idea? Well, I don't know if there's famine uh, so much as, at least yet, so much as if you're locked up and you can't get to food, you're gonna be you're gonna be hungry. I mean, I I I lived in uh, Minot, you know, flying B fifty twos, and we had a snowstorm one time, and I was in my house for a week. You know, finally I had to break out and go get milk and some other things. I mean, I think that's what they're running into is you know you after you're in you, there's only so much stuff that you're prepared to do in quarantine, and then if you can't leave to go get food, 
that's a problem. But surely the Chinese government must know that this is going to happen, right? You lock people down, you don't allow them to leave to go and get food. There are certain things that you need to do. And I guess maybe as well, this is one of the reasons that perhaps the killing of pets, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, vector of transmission will be one of them. But just if you have a pet, you've got to go outside to go to the bathroom. Good point. Yeah, good point. To have a walk. So I just think there's more and more situations there. Have you got any idea about why it is that there's some videos floating around of the Chinese government or their enforcement agency breaking into people's apartments and tasing them and taking them to sort of COVID isolation facilities. I've seen some awful videos and you never know on the internet, right? You see a video and you go, this could be from 2009 during the yeah, whatever, right, whatever right. crisis. Yeah. Um, but these videos that look like kind of individual porta potties and everybody's got their head stuck out. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know what that is, but there's definitely videos floating around of the Chinese government breaking into people's apartments and, and sort of tasing them and taking them away. Do you have any idea what's happening there? Well, um, I think it's I think it's all related to, hey, you may have had a positive test and now you're going to go um, spend time in the pokey. Um, I, it doesn't surprise me for Shanghai. What surprises me is you see the same thing in Australia. They got the same basically camps where they send people to like i can see it in china i can see it in shanghai it makes sense to me but when i see it happening in a in a country that's supposed to have you know something related to the bill of rights and 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 you know the rule of law and you're saying hey this is what they're instituting that's what really bothers me because shanghai i I totally expect this kind of behavior i remember i remember you know the just a concern for the well-being of people is different there you know i've seen people in the most horrid situations in china what's happening people if you enjoyed that then press here for the full unedited episode and don't forget to subscribe peace